Hello and welcome everyone. So in this quick little video, we're going to just uh, understand how and the C++ code works and why we have done what we have done over here. So moving to our base collector header file, you see we have initializability multi. So first, this is the function that we were looking at. And um, you see what we are actually doing in this is that we are passing an array of abilities that we want to require or initialize and we are iterating to them using a for loop and then calling the same function that we used initially initializability basically this is the function um, this one we're calling this function on each of the item on the, in the for loop and next we have removability with tag so the ability system component has this function get activatability gameplayability spec by all matching tags that's a long name so what it does is actually a it uses a tag container to identify abilities that are present on the ability system component and determines that if they are activatable and present on this and then it uh, fills this matching ability array by those abilities now these are not the classes to say these are ability specs basically specs are used to identify each instance of the abilities you could say and then we are iterating over those uh, specs that we have found inside of the matching abilities and we call the function clear ability clear ability removes the specified abilities from the ability system component and we passing the, and the handle of those abilities that have passed the tag check for the function okay next we have change ability level with tags and in the same way we are iterating over the abilities present on the ability system component using the tag container matching and once we have those abilities over here, we are changing the level of those abilities. Specs are basically, like I said, are the uh, instance handles that are used to identify abilities. So we're getting the handle and changing their levels to the new levels that we want them to be. Okay, and similarly, cancel with tag is another function provided by the ability system component and it takes argument with tag and without tags and ignore tags. So we're passing the with tags and without tags to the cancel abilities and it's going to cancel the activatable abilities present on this system component okay so add loose gameplay tag is basically a function to add a loose gameplay tag to the ability system component rather than this character itself and the reason for this is that if the tag is present in the character some abilities might not be blocked uh, personally in my testing they did not seem to work so i had to use this function to get them to apply the tag to the every system component of this actor rather than the actor itself and the reason why we're doing it uh, like count to one is forcefully is that i want to keep the logic simple but if you have like stacking effects and you want to add multiple loose tags then you, you need to make some of uh, the functionality that you determine how many tags are present and you want my you should not remove like uh, if the tag is count is already zero and you're removing one more it's going to throw an error okay so just be careful with the tag count and just to keep the logic simple i'm just uh, making it apply one tag instead of multiple tags so that it is easier to remove tag so i know that i can remove only one tag from it okay and next we have apply t to target data now this is going to be covered more in the when we discuss how we are going to apply uh, GE to the targets using projectiles because we can't wait indefinitely for the projectile to hit a target what for example if a projectile never hits a target so for this type of uh, gameplay abilities we need this gameplay effect applying a uh, target data so we'll discuss it in that but remember that this applies a gameplay effect to the target and target is passed uh, through this uh, target data handle and these functions are really special functions you should not call them because uh, in single player games they might just work but in multiplayer games and this is going to be difficult to manage because these changes are not replicated gameplay effects and changes are replicated and you have to manually replicate these changes but these are useful when you are like for example loading a saved game or respawning a player for a certain location after a, a death something like that so these functions are really useful for those type of changes and you should only use them for these special occasions otherwise you should stick to the gameplay effects okay so this is a quick little explanation of the c++ code and this is it for this video in the next video we'll do a practical demonstration of how to use these functions so this is it thank you very much